Does it give you some sense, not of joy, but of relief at least, that he's potentially facing some consequences? Because as you've said before, this guy's a con artist and he's gotten away with it for years. No, he's more than that, that to me. He's, a really, he's sick. He is really, genuinely a sick person that somehow has been allowed into our system. And I'm not calling him, I'm tired of calling him names. He just can't be anywhere near uh, the office of the presidency. You've played a lot of bad guys. Would you ever play Donald Trump? Never. I, there's nothing about him, there's not one redeeming thing in him at, that I can see ever, ever. That, of course, is actor Robert De Niro, who has been very aggressively and clearly speaking out against Donald Trump, which is good to see. And it is going to, as Stephanie Rule will bring up in this next clip that I have for you, it is going to bring onto him harassment and threats and potentially career damage if he alienates, as it seems like he would, certain portions of his audience with this sort of rhetoric, but he's doing it anyway because it matters that much. And that's really important. And we'll talk about in this segment, which is something I've wanted to for a while, so it's a perfect chance to do it, sort of the obligation, for lack of a better term, that I feel like some people with influence have in speaking out against Trump, and many of them aren't doing it. And so it is courageous on the part of Robert De Niro to do this. And it seems like to us, avid political sort of consumers, or we're constantly keeping up, constantly focusing and super passionate. And so it seems like every, it's not weird for you to speak out against Trump. Obviously, you should be saying this publicly. Use whatever platform you have, however big or small, to make sure he doesn't get elected again. But that's not actually the case in much of the rest of the world. If you're not keeping up with it a lot, it's not a given. And a lot of people do see it as a needless threat to their career. And so doing it should be applauded. We should incentivize and encourage people such as Robert De Niro and others with influence to do this for reasons we'll get into after playing more. And here is De Niro getting asked, this is gonna bring threats your way because of Trump. And why are you doing it anyways? While you're watching this, please make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. Let's get that growth going. Uh, click the join button if you want to become a member to get the daily bonus show and drop a comment letting me know what you're thinking of this. You have no upside in having this conversation, in speaking out against Donald Trump. You are making yourself a target. The interview will air and he will immediately find a reason to talk bad about you in public. Yeah. But you're choosing to use your platform to do so. What do you say to other celebrities who don't want to alienate part of their fan base, don't want to step in harm's way, but they have similar um, megaphones that you do? You know, I, the idea to be bullied at my age by someone like this is not happening. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you were never bullied. No, you know, it's a kid sometimes this, that, but the point is not, and for the country, no. And I think other people are gonna have to stand up and just, because it's either that or you're gonna find yourself in a situation that's so terrifying. You, we always hear about people from Eastern Europe, the, uh, the Jews from other parts of Eastern Europe, from Western Europe coming over, look what happened in France with the Nazis and so on, and they come over and you hear these, and they, and when I was a kid, they'd say, you don't really appreciate this country. You don't, you don't really appreciate what we, what we know from experience. And wow. Yeah, so I will get to another clip where he brings up a similar point, and I do want to circle back to that, knowing that some people instantly, when you make those comparisons or bring up that point, lose their mind. Are you comparing? Blah, blah, blah. So we'll get to that. Um, but I do think it's really important to make sure we're having this conversation within the context of an understanding that however strong America is, the parts of it that make it unique that people, as he said, around the world are in awe of, impressed with, those can be ruined and destroyed. And that's what Trump is threatening to do. And so we have to make sure we don't take these things for granted and we work very uh, constantly to maintain and then obviously improve upon those, uh, those 
unique elements that make America, America. And now thinking about Robert De Niro, he's in contrast to some other celebrities who are choosing to do the opposite. We recently talked about actor uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who <laughs> did this Fox News interview where he said, you know, in 2020, he endorsed President Joe Biden. He won't be doing that in this election. And it seems sort of like maybe he was a little regretful for doing it last time, but I think that was pushed a little bit too much in the headlines that he regrets endorsing. It was more so him saying, I endorsed last time, not going to do that again. And it seems like the reason he was doing that is he doesn't want to alienate parts of his audiences, which in a sense, if you're trying to be really sympathetic, you understand. And it feels weird to say, no, I want, I want you to say something publicly that could hurt your own career and that could bring harassment your way in the way of your family. If you don't do that, you're horrible, right? It feels weird to say something like that. And so I'm not going to go as far as to say you're 100% morally obligated. Otherwise, you're doing something horrible morally to speak out against Trump if you understand the stakes. But close. <laughs> if you No. Um, if you understand the stakes, and we'll get back to people who don't because that's a different story. But if you understand the threat that Trump poses and how he tried to end democracy last time, what he's currently being prosecuted for, his ambitions for a second term, how could you not speak out? How could you be okay with the idea in an election that's probably going to be really close, knowing that your influence that could motivate thousands of people, potentially, depending on how well-known you are, to act in a way maybe they wouldn't have otherwise, knowing that you wouldn't utilize that tool that you have of influence in the interest of our democracy, I do think something's wrong about that. And so again, that's why we should applaud people who are willing to do that. And I do understand there is career backlash that would come with it. And you never would want to imagine people getting the threats that I'm sure Robert De Niro and others who speak out against Trump get. But for the sake of the country and uh, in the interest of democracy, hopefully the people who get it need to, no matter the outcome to their career, uh, need to come out and speak out against Trump. Because one of the things that is really scary is... I think we could lose our democracy because of Trump and, and MAGA, right? But we can't control them. The part that we can have an impact on is a really frightening reality, which is that I think we could lose our democracy because of the lack of information getting to people. People being misinformed, I think, could be one of the crucial variables in a devastating outcome which is to say that a lot of people just don't get the stakes. And it's hard to blame people out there grinding away, working hard. You have all these other obligations, also spending the time to properly understand what's going on in the political realm when it's so irritating and so divided. You get why people try to stay out of that. And I really do have sympathy for that because I feel the wear and tear on my own brain and heart from doing this. Uh, but it's scary to know that people just not really getting it could be why Trump gets elected. And the reason I say that is because I've talked to now so many people recently who once I discussed with them for like five minutes, the record of Trump, what he tried to do and then what he wants to do, most of them, and I'm talking about someone who sort of maybe wasn't gonna vote or maybe was considering third party or just, well, I don't know, wasn't super motivated. They go from that to, you're right, I'm going. I gotta definitely vote for Biden. Just in a quick five minute conversation. Now, I've also gone through that five-minute conversation so many times on the show, and so it's very refined now, so maybe not every single conversation could be that short, but it's a lot of people just not really knowing about the fake elector scheme, not really knowing about Project 2025, not really knowing about Trump's authoritarian intentions, and not really knowing about all these people who work for Trump saying, ah, he's a threat to democracy. And so uh, knowing that millions of people are out there that are a five minute conversation away from doing what could save our democracy. And many of them won't have that conversation with someone. It hurts. And so what that means is because not everyone is watching as sad as this is the Luke Beasley show. Okay. <laughs> Just <laughs> if you can believe it or MSNBC or any political show and some people just aren't checking in on that. And so the only way to reach them is to just, as much surround sound of this message as possible, which needs every single influential person with a megaphone to be speaking it. And that's why we need people like Robert De Niro, 
Dwayne The Rock Johnson, if he would change his mind, uh, Taylor Swift, business people, whatever, out there speaking out on behalf of our democracy. And then also, it makes a huge impact in your personal life. Each person who understands this, which is millions of people, do get it, goes out there and has those five minute conversations, it makes a big difference. And it opens a lot of people's eyes. One more clip. What do you say um, to those who say, I don't like the guy, but I'm gonna vote for him? What's your message to them? I don't understand it. I don't, I don't think they understand how dangerous it will be if he ever, God forbid, becomes president. I don't think they really understand. And historically, from what I see, even with, in, in Nazi Germany, they had it with Hitler. They don't take him serious. He looks like a clown, acts like a clown. Mussolini, same thing. These guys, I don't know why, they look like clowns. They somehow, people, uh, that element of society identifies in some ways with them, but it would be chaos beyond our imagination. Yeah, so again, some people instantly lose it whenever you make such a comparison. And it's not to equivocate, it's not to say, Trump's gonna do what Hitler did or something. It's something that you must do when thinking logically about a concept, which is bring that concept to its furthest extreme. And so when we see Trump's fascistic behavior, intentions, tendencies, we then have to think about what's the extent of this, this uh, threat and what insights can we derive from history based on the worst leaders that we can think of and one of the insights is what he just brought up there people didn't take seriously often some of these horrific fascistic individuals and thought they were sort of cartoonish and buffoons and so again they weren't taken as seriously as they should have been and thus we saw where some of these things ended and so that's the point that's really important to understand it's good that De Niro brought that up because one of the defenses of Trump or the accusations of hyperbole is premised on the idea that, oh, he's too goofy and he's not serious enough to do anything bad. And so again, it's not to equivocate or to say that this or that would happen. It's to understand based on history, what things we need to do to make sure something horrible doesn't happen. Let me know what you thought of all that in the comments.